Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm in my kitchen and that is because, if you haven't already guessed by the title of this video, we're going to be doing a bit of a mini kitchen makeover. It's time for a refresh. It's been quite a while since one of my first YouTube videos here on YouTube, oh this is slick, um, which was a couple of years ago, I think it might have even been nearly three years ago now, when I painted these kitchen cupboards. If you'd like to go back and take a look at how I did that, the whole process was documented then, so essentially I take you through all the steps to paint your laminate um, kitchen cupboards or Formica kitchen cupboards. But today we're going to be doing a little refresh. It's been a while, but the kitchen and the painted cupboards is still holding up just about. I have got a leaky roof, which I still need to sort out, but we won't worry about that because it's leaking above the kitchen sink. So we're okay, um, nothing to panic about, and the leak seems to have stopped, so I just need to figure out what caused it and then we'll deal with that. But the plan for the kitchen makeover is I actually want to introduce some open shelving. So you may remember if you've been watching me this year that in a vlog I got some scaffold boards cut locally. I got them cut to size and I think I managed to get all three boards and the cutting, I think it was for under £30. So I've got those cut to size, so what I want to do is create some open shelving in here which is going to involve removing some of the cupboards. And while I'm at it I thought we'd do a few other bits as well. I'm thinking about maybe doing something with the tiles, we'll see how we go. I don't know why I've decided to start on another project at the end of November as we're heading towards the busiest season of all, but here we are, <laughs> so wish me luck. So before we get into it, I'm gonna show you the uh, tour of the kitchen, how it is now in a moment, but do click subscribe if you haven't done so already. I post new videos every week, and if you enjoy this kitchen makeover, I've got no idea how it's going to go, <laughs> then do give this video a thumbs up. So this is how the kitchen is looking currently. As you can see, we've got the painted cupboards and then the countertops here, the blue tiles, the leaky roof. We've got this, that I'm not a fan of. It's a cheap and cheerful, I would describe that, light fitting. I know that because I've had a quick look at how much these are on, I think on Amazon, they're about 13 pounds. But basically when we had the electrics done, when we first moved in here, the guy that did our electrics just had that on the van. So we sort of went with what was available to really have a temporary fix just to get some extra light in the kitchen because originally it was just a single pendant but it's not the most attractive of things so I have bought something that we might be replacing that with if it will um, fit so we'll see <laughs> um, and then over here we've got the sink area we've got this area here which has got room for some like I've got some old school chairs underneath this might switch those out not sure um, random crate on top and a box full of gym stuff, some plants. I've got this sticky um, whiteboard on the kitchen wall that I was using but I'm not anymore so I'm going to remove that. It was quite handy but I've got a different system now for organising myself so I don't use that anymore. So that's going to come down. And then over here is where I thought we would address this situation because a, it's full of clutter, and B, I just think it's a bit too much to have the top cupboards on both sides of the kitchen. So I thought we'll try and get this out. <laughs> try. And then we will attempt to put some open shelving in there. Up here I've got a, it's actually a shower curtain pole that I picked up in Poundland for two pounds and I thought that was quite a clever solution just to hang the plants in the window with. So I'll probably keep that, um, but maybe make it look a bit better. And then down here I've actually got some shutters that I picked up off a skip and painted white. So those look really nice so I'm going to keep those. They're just halfway up the window which just gives us a little bit of privacy but obviously lets the light in still with the top half of the window being open. And then in this corner we've got some open shelving which I like. I've stuck this random lamp here, I don't think that's going to stay. Basically the lamps in the bedroom, one of them broke so I've just put the second one in here but that may go. Um, and these are the scaffold boards that hopefully will fit. Then on top of the fridge I've got the mugs, <laughs> which I switch out seasonally and yeah, as you can see some Christmas ones are creeping in. And my piece Lily's looking very sorry for itself, I don't know what's happened. The first thing that I'm going to do is empty out the cupboards. So I've got a crate, just a plastic crate here. I'm going to take everything out and then once it's all in the crate I'll go through it all and have a bit of a declutter to see what I want to keep. It's going to be open shelving, so I'll be rethinking exactly what 
I want on display and what I don't want on display. And I will be taking the opportunity to have a bit of a clear out as well, but I'm not gonna do the declutter on here because you've seen me declutter a million times before, so. <laughs> So there we go, all empty. Now, one tip for you, if you want to go for the open uh, shelf look, is my friend Medina at Grillo Designs did this. I'll link to her Instagram so you can have a look. So one solution she's done is actually just to take the doors off and then you get the open look. And I think she added some like peelable wallpaper at the back of the cupboards to give them like a nice look. And it just opened up the space. So that's one way that you can do this if you, oh, Honestly, I think this camera's giving up. It's the next day and I don't have any progress to show you. In fact, I just have a kitchen that's really difficult to plug anything in. <laughs> so I've basically got like one plug for the kettle, the toaster, the slow cooker and the microwave, which is fun. But I did manage to pick up a couple of bits in Wix in the hope that the electrician can install. This is a um, double socket. So I'm thinking we could pop the double socket on there, where that is, and then I'll have two plug points on the shelves, and if I don't like the look of it, I can always, you know, cover it up, won't be an issue. So that's the plan for now, I've got the electrician coming in a couple of days time. So things are on hold until then. And when you do get an electrician around, it's always good to think if you need to do any other jobs around the house. So I've got a light switch that needs replacing, so yeah, we'll have that done at the same time. And I also ordered this uh, light from Amazon, which is kind of like an LED panel light um, for the ceiling, which I'm hoping will be good to replace these. We shall find out. Hello, it's a new year. We're back in the kitchen, picking up on the makeover. I can't remember quite where we left things, so I'll give you a quick recap now, just to show you where things are and what we're going to be doing next. So just before Christmas, the guys from Fantastic Services very kindly helped me out with some electrical work. I had an electrician for one and a half hours, and he managed to do so much stuff in that time, including removing the wire cable that was coming from here. So essentially he just made that um, dead and got rid of it. And so I've patched over that. I just need to give this wall a good clean today before we start figuring out how to get the shelves up. I also need to pull off this, which had a peak and it's not looking good behind there. <laughs> I'm kind of dreading doing that. And then we also have changed the light. So I've gone for this light from Amazon and yeah, that's been fitted. So really pleased with that because it's giving the room some lovely natural light, which I think works really nicely in a kitchen. So the plan for today is to get all this sorted, tidied up, give it a paint, then I'm gonna measure up the shelves, cut those to size, then I've got some brackets coming from Amazon along with some wood stain. So maybe we'll manage to get this complete today. We'll see, I also need to get this off. There's some old beans in here, by looks of things, yuck. Do be aware if you ever use this self-adhesive whiteboard, that it doesn't just peel off it will do this to your wall. I'm just gonna go around with a chisel now and get rid of any of these excess bits of grout that's just sticking up from behind the tiles, just to even all of this off. And now I'm just removing these old brackets. to prize out the wall plugs. I'm still standing here. So now that that's all chipped away, what I've done is gone in with a piece of cardboard 
to kind of just check the size and I've actually cut the cardboard out to measure kind of the angles because everything's a bit wonky in this house so I'm kind of using that as a template which I've then transferred onto here so I've got the one straight side and then this side is where I'm going to make the cut so I'm just going to do that using the jigsaw I am going to sand them outside. I'm going to use an electric sander so it will be mask on and then it will get cracking out there. Those are all nice and smooth. I haven't gone crazy because I want to keep some of the nice texture of the wood but I'm going to just go over it with a bit of um, sandpaper, just a sanding block by hand, just to take off any little splinters and definitely go in the direction of the wood because I found that these boards do splinter quite easily. So the sanding's done. Next up, I'm going to just use some ready mixed filler just to go into the little holes um, where the screws were. So I'm just using this one from Tetrion. It's an all-purpose filler, so this will just be really easy to use. To fill up those holes, I'm just gonna use my finger to smooth over them. And now I'm gonna deal with this. So I think I'm gonna start off with a chisel just to kind of get any loose stuff off. Go straight into the dustpan. And then um, hoping that I won't have to take like everything off. <laughs> away at this a little bit further and I actually quite like the concrete finish so I'm wondering whether just to chip away it might be a bit of a hefty task but this whole section of wall hmm <laughs> I could live to regret this so next up I'm going on with some furniture wax onto the boards I want to keep them nice and light and natural so I think I'm just gonna use this one which should go on nice and clear I'm just gonna use an old sock to do that. Which is kind of handy because you can put your hand in it. <laughs> so here you can see the difference. So this is without the wax and this is with. So not a huge difference to the colour of the wood but I would say it just brings out the grain really nicely and it also will protect it a bit as well. Amazon theme. So let's unbox the brackets. Had a bit of a fail with the tile paint. Oh, slipping off the counter. Um, this is what I ordered. Didn't really look at the size of the tin. It's tiny. So we'll see how far that one goes, but I've got a feeling that to get the tiles painted, I might need a little bit more. It's smaller than my hand. Oh dear, I really should read things properly. Okay, let's take a look at the brackets. Here they are, and I just want to double check, fingers crossed now, spin you around, that they're gonna fit all right. Yeah, perfect, so I did measure that correctly. These will, go above. So these are really good if you've got any spaces where you've got no room for the bracket to go below the shelf because these will screw on from above. So I've got some paint, I'm gonna go over all of this section. This I'm gonna decide on later, so we'll leave that for now. Let's just concentrate on this, which is where the shelves are going to go. I'm gonna chance just using some regular emulsion rather than kitchen paint. Doesn't get a lot of use this area, so hopefully that'll be all right. Oh, it looks better already. So I've just noticed that it's made the ceiling look a bit grim. So I'll probably have to, oh, come on, focus. I think it's saying it's bedtime. So what I've actually done is screwed the bracket on so that I can use, put the whole shelf up with the spirit level on it and then just mark the holes. And then I'll have to take it off again because there is another hole behind this bit, but at least then I'll know that it's perfectly straight doing it that way.
Does that look straight? Okay, it is a couple of weeks later. I just want to update you on the wall situation. So the shelves are up, and you may remember I pulled off the self-adhesive whiteboard. Some of the paint came away. So I was going to paint over it, but I quite like the look of the concrete underneath. So what I've actually been doing is very gently chipping away with a chisel to expose the concrete beneath. Let me show you. So this is how it's looking. So this is essentially just the plastered kind of concrete effect that was beneath the paint. And I really like the colour of it. So what I'm doing is just very carefully chipping it away with a chisel. As you can see, it just comes away really nicely, but it does take a little bit of time. So I've just been going at it with a chisel and yeah, it's just flaking off. Um, I've been finding that if you wet it down a bit as well, it comes off a little bit easier. But I'm trying to go really carefully so that I keep the nice smooth finish. There's a bit of a crack down the middle here, which is kind of annoying. But I'm thinking maybe we could paint in that or I don't know. It's not the end of the world because I quite like the kind of industrial effect that it's providing. So I'm just going to carry on with this wall and then I'll show you when it's finished. Good morning, it's a brand new day and we're going to be cracking on with the kitchen makeover. I don't know why I'm saying that when it's the kitchen makeover video. Obviously that's what we're going to be cracking on with. You would hope so anyway, wouldn't you? But it's just been very spread out this makeover. Usually I'll try and like cram everything into a weekend or you know a few days in a row and it just doesn't always work out like that. So Hopefully this is kind of realistic as to how you could kind of fit in a project like this within your lifestyle, you know, if you're working Monday to Friday or different shift patterns, you've only got a few hours here and there, that's how we're doing this one. So hopefully that's relatable anyway. I think I'm spilling my coffee. So I'm going to spend a few hours on the kitchen today. As you can see, um, we've now got the concrete exposed on the wall, which I'm really pleased with. And then here, I started styling the shelves, I was getting ahead of myself. I really should not have done that because it's all gonna to have to come off, I think, while I prep the tiles because the next stage is going to be to paint the tiles. I'm gonna bite the bullet and we're going to go for it. And then I want to introduce some storage under this counter that I'm leaning on here. So we've got this space under here which is kind of meant for like bar stools. Don't really sit in the kitchen. So I'm thinking of maybe building in some crates or doing something to add some storage under there. That is the annoying thing when you do it across different days. You have to keep on clearing everything out and bringing it back in again to make space. So I don't recommend doing it this way, but sometimes it's just the only way to get things done. So, hello. We will clear all this, and the kettle's still hot, so I better be careful. Okay, so next I'm gonna just go over the tiles with some limescale and grime remover and some hot water just to make sure that any grease, grime, dust is off them before we give them a coat of paint. I've been feeling so small Watch the clock ticking off the wall some old crates. This wooden shelf I actually found and it was in the bathroom. If you saw the bathroom declutter video you'll have seen that. I took it out of the bathroom, it wasn't really doing anything in there. And I want to use some of these old crates to try to create, crates to create, some storage underneath the worktop here. So I'm just playing around with these three. You can pick these up all sorts of places. The car boot sale is a good place to look as well. Um, or maybe try a local wine merchant. And I'm just going to try and figure out 
a way, let's just angle you down a bit, to fit these in nicely. I might use the skirting board to kind of rest them on. This one would be quite good under the counter, I'm thinking. Well, that fits quite nicely. So we could do that and get that one flush up against here. I want to do this, which is about to collapse. I'll get drilling. <laughs> I'm going to drill that all in now. I'm going to look quite cool. Okay, so that's all in. So yeah, I think that's gonna be quite cool. I'm gonna maybe put some cookery books in there or some bits and pieces, things like protein powder and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's a nice little use of the space under there. And all of this stuff is being upcycled. Yeah, really happy with that. So next up, I'm going on with some of this Rust-Oleum all surface paint. This is a paint and primer in one. Wasn't um, <laughs> aware that the tin would be so small when I ordered it online, but let's just hope this stretches and also let's hope it works all right because I've not used this before. Painting tiles is new to me, but we've had this kitchen for 10 years now. These tiles were here from the previous owners, so I think it's worth risking it. And if it goes really wrong, then it'll just be an excuse to eventually replace them. So I've just tested the brush and the roller. The roller's looking a lot neater, a lot more of a smooth finish, but I've realised I'm going to need to go around with some masking tape on all the worktops to protect those. And a little tip for you if you are applying some tape is to always just fold a little end so that when it comes to peeling it off, you've got something to grab. Look at those beautiful stars, I want to take a trip to Mars. Nothing can break me, nothing can break me. it's not doing me any favours. It's evening time, I am going on with the second coat. Oh, it does look kind of different in here though, right? Um, yeah, second coat's going on, but I've just run out of paint. This is so frustrating because I was on a roll with it. I've managed to do a second coat right the way around this side and then only just to here. And then that's just all first coat for the rest of it over there, which is kind of frustrating, but I'll order some more. So I'll have to get cracking with it in a couple of days time now because I've got a busy day tomorrow. So we'll be coming back to it. So I better just get tidied up now and yeah, pleased with the progress, but kind of frustrated as well that I didn't get more paint. Good morning. It is another day and another day of painting the tiles. I feel like I haven't been vlogging because I've just been painting tiles, essentially. So I went through the first small tin of paint, then I went through a second tin of the paint. I don't know why I ordered the small tin twice. It was nowhere near enough. But then I got around to ordering a third tin, this time a 750 mil tin. So I feel like I've got enough now. And I'm now on, I think this is coat number five <laughs> on these tiles. So I'm really hoping this will be the last coat. I'm pleased with how they're looking, but it, 
really hasn't been much fun painting these. I feel like the paint kind of goes on like glue. And then when you do the second coat, it almost wants to pull off the first coat, even though I allowed that to dry. So you have to go very delicately. I reverted to using a brush as well. I found like the roller was almost peeling it off. Um, whereas a brush you can be a bit more gentle with. So I've got a really soft brush. And I'm just going to carry on and get this final coat on. Fingers crossed this will be the last one. I think it's because it's blue underneath. It's quite um, tricky because obviously I'm going blue to white. So let me just show you anyway, a quick update. So this is how it's looking with four coats. So as you can see, I mean, it has gone on quite nicely. You know, the finish is quite nice. It does get the odd air bubble in it. Um, but I don't mind that because I guess tiles would have air bubbles, you know. It does require a lot of patience um, if you're doing this. And maybe check out some other paints. I've heard the Wilco paint is also meant to be really well recommended. The rust sodium has been fine, but as I say, it has been quite gluey. I don't know if that's <laughs> the same for all tile paints, but um, yeah, I'm pleased with the finish at least. day <laughs> here we are again i am going to wash all of the ceilings today and give that a lick of paint also i've got this unit that i think originally was a cd unit that i used for mugs so i want to mount this next to that one so i need to sort of like mount that up onto the wall here underneath the cabinet so that's the plan for this morning first things first though We're on to mounting this. I've turned it upside down, which is why it looks awful. I found these, which are actually Ikea legs from a unit that I double stacked, so I didn't need the second pair of legs. So I thought that'd be really good to use at the front, just to stop this toppling forward when it sits on the skirting board, but they're just a little bit too short. So I needed some extra wood to kind of stack the legs up, just to make that all important <laughs> extra inch. And I found these, which are Poundland uh, little plaques. This one says, well, it was attached. It says, save water, drink Prosecco, amen to that, but sorry, Poundland sign, you're now becoming a support for the legs. I'm also gonna add a couple of these little corner brackets just to where it will be flush against the skirting board because I don't want it wobbling about at the base so that will just keep it nicely against the wall. How about that? I'm pleased with that. It's really making use of the space. You know, that was a bit of a dead area before. So yeah, a bit higgledy-piggledy, but that's kind of the vibe. Um, yeah, it'd be nice when all the mugs are back in there too. this shower curtain pole propped across the top of the cupboards. So now that the cupboards on this side have gone, this won't rest on the cupboards anymore. So I'm gonna mount some brackets onto the window frame so I can hang this up and use this to hang the plants from. And these are the ones I'm using, they're just from Ikea. They did actually originally come with a curtain pole, but I'm not sure where that's got to, so <laughs> we'll use the shower curtain pole.
Good morning, it is a, another day. The kitchen now is finished, or at least as finished as it's going to be for the time being. So I'm going to leave you with some shots of the kitchen now that this makeover is complete. I really hope you like it. What I'm also going to do is film a separate kitchen tour where I'll take you around all of it in more detail and tell you where everything's from, how I did everything, and my experience of using the tile paint. You're probably bored of hearing me talk about the tile paint now, but just in case you're interested, that will be in a separate video that's on its way very soon. So do hit subscribe if you haven't done so already and stay tuned for that. But now I will leave you with some shots of the finished kitchen. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of it. I really hope you like it. The main thing for me is the light. It is so much brighter in here and I think it feels bigger as well now that we've got rid of the blue and gone for the white. It feels a lot wider when you walk in. Apologies if you can hear the wind out there, it is blowing a storm outside. But yeah, I'll leave you with that. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you did. Click subscribe if you're new here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.